Welcome to another basically shitty tutorial and in today's tutorial we're going to be recreating the classic PSX style look. The shader that I'm going to be using is completely open source and can be found on the GitHub page. We'll be leaving the owner's link in the description so without wasting any time let's get started with the video. I'm going to be breaking the video in two segments. One would be showing off the shader and the second would be showing off the shader with the pixelation effect applied. The one you're seeing right now in the screen is the one with the pixelation effect applied. If there are a lot of background noises, just ignore them all. So yeah, let's just get on with the tutorial. First of all, go to the link in the description and download the shader. Make a GitHub account or then just download the code from here. I don't think so you need a GitHub account or anything. But yeah, just set it. Just check out for yourself. Anyway, once you've downloaded it, all you have to do is to go into the downloaded folder and extract the file. We'll go inside this thing, then inside the asset, and just drag and drop all these things. It's just easier to do so. If you extract the entire project, your project might show some errors or something. But yeah, anyway. So once you've done everything, you let you need just load things up. And yeah, let me just real quick. So for this demo, I'm gonna be using this room called the PS1 Pasmophobia, whatever the shit this is called. I'll be also giving a link in the description. First off, go into your directional light and turn off the shadows because PS1 didn't have shadows, come on. So once you've done that, now comes the most tedious part of the tutorial. If you have previously made your project, then it's gonna be a nightmare for you. And if your project has a lot of materials and textures, it's gonna be even a bigger nightmare for you. So now what you have to do is to create separate material for each of your textures and apply them to your model. If you're starting a new project, then well, that's good for you. But if you're like me, then well, you're gonna have to do this shit entirely. You're just gonna have to literally redo the entire thing. Once you've created the material, drag and drop your main texture file and then go into the shader. From here, go into the shader graph and select this URP PSX unlit. Okay, just re reassign the texture. And then you have to do, I'm going to be going over these settings later, but what you have to do now is to manually add these textures where they belong. And this is a really tedious part and I'm literally not going to show it, but I'm going to do it all. So yeah, let me just do it real quick. Well, now the tedious part is over and as you can see, I've literally retextured the entire scene with new materials. I've also added two point lights to my scene just to, you know, sort of light things up a little bit because it kind of looks boring. Okay, now comes the fun part. Now we're going to be looking throughout these options and f figuring out which one you should be using in your game project depending on the looks. Think of this as a makeup tutorial for your ugly game. The first option is of course lit. It basically means that if the texture is going to be like be reactive to the light or not. If you're not dumb, you probably know what this is, so let's just move on to the next one. So the next option is, is specular. It basically means if it's going to be like you know, be react reflective or something, as if it's gonna be taking in the specular light or not. So I would turn this off because PSX didn't really have that. I don't know what camera clipping is. And now we have the use affine. This is basically affine texturing. I really can't explain how this works, but it just sort of works. It kind of creates a like a parallax mapping to the textures or something. I don't really know. I'll be leaving a detailed like a detailed video on the description if you want to understand it more. The one that we are interested in is in the use vertex jitter. This basically recreates the PSX vertex jitter effect. Like this makes the um, texture sort of jitter depending on your camera's view. Previously in PlayStation 1, the effect was achieved using its hardware limitation of texture mapping. But right now we're doing it on our own using this literal shader for some reason because people like this really a lot. Oh my god, I sound like a robot, don't I? So the next option is use color position. This basically recreates the PSX style color. The, due to the technical limitation, PSX texture shared like a sort of a similar color palette or a color scheme. So this one aims to do exactly that. As you can see, this is what it does. I don't really know how any of this works, but yeah, I'm not a nerd. So, so depending on the values, you'll get a different result. So that's pretty much is the like the color precision. So, you know, just add it and stuff. But yeah, let's move on. So the final feature that I'm going to be showing you on this one is the creating the uh, pixelation effect. 
for this you have to create a render texture call it whatever and once that now you have to set up a resolution for the render texture for this one I'm gonna be going with the default one but I'm just gonna be changing the, uh, uh, the X one the width or what which one is it height that's the width I guess yeah so <coughs> I'm gonna change it to 180 and then what I'm gonna be doing is to set it to point just in case uh, you, not just in case you have to set it to point to get a much crisper look now go into your camera under the output set up this render texture once that is done you have to create a canvas or just literally create a raw UI image and then go into this thing at anchor thing just hit alt and then just select this one to fill it up entirely now select your canvas and make sure to set this thing to uh, scale with screen size here we go scale with screen size for the reference uh, reference resolution i'm gonna set up the hd resolution which is a 1920 by 180 1080 sorry 1080p so yeah uh once you're done with that all you have to do now is to assign this render texture to this raw image it's pretty simple right yeah it's pretty simple and once you do that you should get the pixelation effect but i'm gonna just rename it to pixelation effect and then here we go and all i have to do is to assign this to the raw image and there we go it's looking a bit too pixelated so i'm just gonna go a little bit higher i guess please just ignore the background noises you're here for the tutorial watch that and leave so yeah let me just real quick increase its um as you can see it won't be showing up in the scene view but it will be showing up in the game view due because it's like the extension of the camera it's gonna increase it to 320 for a better up look so yeah that's pretty much it for the pixelation effect and now i'm gonna be showing you the final thing which is like adding a sort of like um you know a renderer feature into the urp's forward renderer asset and also make sure that you're not using any kind of anti-aliasing because that will just literally kill the effect so yeah let's get like let's move towards the final thing and i just want to end this tutorial as fast as possible so open up your player settings into the build settings, go into the graphics part, and then you should see this thing. Hit on it, and then you should get the forward renderer. In here, you can add a new renderer feature. For this, I'm just going to be using the color um, dithering effect. All right, wait, yeah, no, it doesn't work, I guess. So the only one that I found working was the pixelation effect, which gives this sort of effect. I don't really know if this is pixelation, this definitely is not pixelation, this kind of seems like an extreme level of color precision, but this does look pretty cool, so I'm just gonna add this, so yeah. And there is another thing called the fog setting, which literally doesn't work, and you shouldn't use it unless you want your game to look entirely pink like this, so I'm just gonna remove it. So yeah, that's basically it, and there isn't anything else, that's literally it. I was trying to set up a first person controller when Unity decided to crash right on my face, and yep it's just crashed so i can show you a better gameplay but yeah afterwards i did get it to work so yep that's pretty much it thanks for watching now get lost